into the Cougar Tailgate, where BYU fandom lives. Here's your host, Lauren McClain. How's it going, friends? Lauren McClain here with Cleon Wall, and we're doing what we do best, talking all things BYU Cougars. Here's what we got coming up on the show today. New BYU football defensive assistant Sione Pauha chats with us about how the former Ute is adjusting to life in royal blue. Plus, former Cougar and NFL linebacker Brian Keel joins us to reminisce about his Hail Mary grab for the win in last year's alumni game and how he plans to come out victorious yet again this year. But first, Cleon and I are going to reveal our draft picks for who we'd want on our alumni squad out of the guys on Team Royal or Team Navy. Cleon, before we begin... I want to know if you played football, what position would you want to be? Actually, I played running back and safety on the seventh grade football team for the Fremont yeah. Generals in Roseburg, Oregon. Yeah. How <laughs> That's impre- an intense name, the yeah. Fremont Generals. The Fre- well, John C. Fremont, he was a general, so there you go. Well, there you go. Uh, I was not good at either position. Uh, my one shining moment was in practice. I took a ball up the middle after a handoff. And it would have been a touchdown run, but because it was practice, they blew it dead and brought it back, and we had to run it again. Um, so there's that. My low light was playing free safety in a game <laughs> and letting it pass go over my head to a wide receiver. I believe it ended up in a touchdown. Seventh grade was a long time ago. <laughs> um, but, but, the, but, but clearly, you still remember it oh, very, very well. Oh, yeah. Very I, impactful for you. Because I looked at the other safety, and I'm like, wait, were you supposed to have that guy, or was I supposed to have? You know, it, it's seventh grade, so what do you expect? Um, yeah. That was my first and last year uh, playing football. I broke my arm the following summer and started playing basketball. Funny enough, I was playing basketball when I broke my arm. So oh, there you go. Well, there you go. So what what position would I want to be? Unrealistically, uh, a slot receiver. You know, I'm kind of a short guy, so moving in and out yeah. of the big guys. You know, kind of like a Wes Welker. That's that's what I would see my position okay. as. Um, of course, our high school featured a power running game, so I don't know how much I would have actually got the ball. So realistically, <laughs> I would probably say I was a I'd, I'd be a kicker. I know that sounds weird, but I'm five foot nine and I'm not a big guy. I probably should have played soccer and then I should have probably become a kicker. <laughs> I would have been famous. Yeah, probably not. But anyway, lots and lots of money. Yeah. Yeah. So there we Man. go. There's my unrealistic and my realistic take on what kind of uh, player I'd want to be in football. I love it. Hey, you really, you really missed out. You really missed your, your shot, your opportunity. <laughs> um, I'm, listen, I'm not one to toot my own horn, Cleon, but uh, I'm a four-time intramural flag football champion. So, <laughs> wow, yeah, like I mean, I, you put me anywhere, and I <laughs> play. No, I'm just kidding. I actually think I would love to play linebacker. Just, just yeah, following the ball. I love middle to tackle. or edge. I think edge. Okay, yeah, I'd be an edge linebacker. All right, let's get to it. There are 33 former players on Team Royal this year led by none other than the great Ty Detmer as a starting quarterback and Max Hall as his backup. I'm sure Max Hall does not love being his backup. He's like, I don't back up nobody, especially after winning last year. There are 31 guys on Team Navy led by John Beck and Brandon Doman as the signal callers. All of those guys playing, of all those guys playing, we're going to tell you who we'd draft for quarterback, running back, wide receiver, tight end, and then two defensive players. Cleon, who are you picking for your first draft pick at quarterback? Okay, at quarterback, I will pick Max Hall. I'd mm. like John Beck just because that guy has a gun on him. But Max Hall, he just doesn't want to lose. So yeah. I'm going to have to go with Max Hall. Ty Detmer, I I, I want to put him in there because that's like I, I grew up watching Ty Detmer. I was in high school when he was here at BYU. So I want to pick Ty Detmer. But if I'm in high school and he's his age and I'm my age, I probably should go with someone <laughs> just a tad bit younger. And Max Hall's the perfect guy because they already work together in high school right now. So I'm going to go with there Max Hall go. again. And truly, Brandon Doan would be, a, he had a phenomenal collegiate career as well. But I'm going to go with John Beck for my draft pick. BYU's second all time leading passer. He had a decent NFL career. He's still engrossed in the quarterback world, training some of the best current quarterbacks in the game right now, Cleon. So that guy is in great shape. He still has the mind and capacity to do it. So I'm going with John Beck. All right. Who do you got for running back? I, wow. I want to say Harvey Unga. I want to say Manasseh Tonga. Those guys are bruisers. Uh, Harvey's, yeah. Harvey's good at catching the ball, too. But he, I'm sure Harvey's in good shape because he's coaching the running backs right now, and I'm, I'm sure he's in right. phenomenal shape. But I think I need someone who's a little bit quicker. I'm actually going to draft J.J. DeLuigi. That's that's Ooh, my guy. I'm going right. to I'm going to say he's my guy that I would choose as my running back because I need someone who can catch it and dart up the field. Of course, I don't know what shape J.J.'s in, but I'm just going to go with that <laughs> pick anyway. <laughs> because he has a really cool name, too. I remember loving saying J.J. DeLuigi. 
I'm going to go with Curtis Brown. And listen, Cleon, I know he's a little bit older, but he finished his career as a leading rusher in BYU history. Obviously, Jamal Williams broke his record, but that guy is in great shape, really good shape still. And he was so big. And I, I remember him just, I like idolized that guy. I loved watching him. So whether he's in great shape truly or not, I'm going to go with that, that draft pick because I just think he's really cool. My second pick would have been LG Brown because he had a, he had a great uh, collegiate career as well. He was quick and he was a bruiser. All right, let's move on to wide receiver tight end. Who you got? Wow, I, I want to pick Mitch Matthews just because he's so tall or Cody Hoffman because he's BYU's all-time leading receiver. I'm actually going to go with Neil Pau just because he's younger. Mm, I mean, okay. he, you know, he he just played for BYU just a second ago. So I'm going to go with Neil Pau as my as my wide receiver tight end. Okay, that's probably smart. Uh, I'm going to go with, however, something a little smarter, Cleon. And I'm going to go with a Super Bowl winner, Dennis Pitta. Okay? Oh, brother. The best smarter. tight end, arguably. <laughs> the best tight end to come out of BYU. He had a Super Bowl uh, catch for Baltimore Ravens. My second pick would have been Austin Colley, who also played in the Super Bowl, had a fantastic NFL career before he ha- uh, kind of got bogged down with concussions. So I'm going to go with Dennis Pitta. They're both about my age. They've been to the Super Bowl. <laughs> Duh! I'm still super young, Cleon, so yes. I'm going to go with those guys who I'm sure are in great shape still. <laughs> Dennis Pitta does have some hip problems, so let's hope that's not bogging him down. Okay, now let's go with our two defensive players. Who you got for number one? I am going to go with... Oh, man, this was a tough one for me. I'm going to say Aaron Francisco. Uh, he's a pretty athletic okay. guy. He can cover a lot of ground. Well, at least he did when he was a player here. He's a big time hitter, but I think he can still cover a lot of ground. He played defensive back, linebacker. He was he was kind of like one of those hybrid guys. The other guy I'm going to pick is Keenan Ellis. Yes, he's playing in this game. Uh, I'm going to pick him because he just got done playing football not long ago. So I think he'll be able to cover a lot of ground too, and hopefully he'll be able to prove me right that he he's a guy that needs to be picked. You're going with the young bucks. Yep. You're going with in better physical shape than mental <laughs> shape. I'm I'm going the mental route. Uh, number one for me on the defensive side is Brandon Ogletree. They used to call him the hammer, and uh, they mentioned how he was still very intense in last year's alumni game, and so, and he served his mission with me uh, in Chile Concepcion. So he was the uh, assistant to the president. President, what's it called? Yeah, it is the assistant to the president. Uh, really good guy, but also very, very intense. And I know he's still got that in him. So I'm going to go with Brandon Ogletree. Number two, I'm going to go with Bronson Kafusi. He's still fairly young. The dude is a, still a beast. He just recently stopped training to be in the NFL. He got the height to cause some disruption to those old guys. <laughs> so Bronson Kafusi was a no brainer pick for me. All right, Cleon, let's move on. Our first guest today isn't a BYU alum. In fact, he hails from the team up north where he was first team all Mountain West, finishing his collegiate career as a BCS buster in the Fiesta Bowl, followed by eight seasons in the NFL. After coaching at Navy and at the University of Utah, Sione Pouha, don't worry, he taught me how to pronounce his name. He accepted a job on Kalani's staff as the new defensive tackles coach. The media talked to him plenty not long after he was hired, but I wanted to chat with him about how things are going now that he's coaching again. How's it been going? Yeah, I love it, man. You know, I love being here. Uh, obviously, you know, uh, coming here, being part of this, you know, great staff, Kalani, and and uh, just really wanted to be an addition to what has already been built here and continue to, to take the, the program where it needs to go. Um, but it's been awesome, man. You know, we're in spring ball, kind of do what what I kind of naturally know how to do, if that makes sense. And it's, it's good to come in. And, and and I think just the experiences that I've had have made me a better version for what I am today, if that makes sense. So it's good to, good to come in and say, okay, I can do this better. I can teach this better. I can change the verbiage on this better provide more clarity for my players and and that part has been really exciting when you can um, reinvent yourself and innovate yourself as a teacher because what you teach and and really depends on how your players will play right will they be able to respond will they be able to take it in so the ability to come in here and be able to continue just innovate and push the envelope on becoming a better teacher being a better coach and then trying to see that if if that affects your players in a positive way you know it's been real exciting okay so how has it been different then for you? You said I've improved. I, you know, I'm, I've learned a lot of things in the past. You've been at Utah. You've been at Navy. Yeah. You, it, it's been a different experience for you there. So, how are things different this time around in terms of teaching your linemen? This is what I want you to do. Yeah, I think uh, like like the fundamentals and principles always stay the same, especially when you play technique. It really is just your your, your ability to deliver and to choose and to become. Um, 
more effective when it comes to like practices and setting up those individual drills, right? And so we always know, and here's an example, we always know you don't cross over your feet, right? Now, are you creating the, the, the drills to support them and to help them succeed? So it's that part, right? The principles will always stay the same. The framework, when it comes to, you know, everybody has 24 periods, right? Everybody has spring balls, right? But it's what you it's what you do inside that structure that, that really determines the difference that you'll be able to make when you come out of those uh, those phases. How do you think your relationship to your players has changed over time? Yeah, I mean, you know, that's what relationships take. They take time and experiences, right? And so that's my number one deal, you know, being somewhat of a leader is to be able to connect with them, right? Not only on a football level, but on a personal level. And, uh, you know, it's definitely improved. It's, not only does relationships improve with time, right, but the experiences that are within those times. So making sure you're eating with them, make sure you're laughing with them, make sure you understand who they are, make sure when you drive home, you give one of them a call and just ask how they're doing, how their family's doing. And so, you know, a lot of different elements of, of you know, components of, of connecting with people um, is, is something that's super important. It does take time to do it, but if you do, if you have time and you don't have those experiences, it's just time wasted. And so it's within the allotted time that you have those experiences with your players. Do you think any of your players get a little nervous when they see <laughs> your caller ID come up? It's like, oh man, it's coach. <laughs> I would hope not, right? I would hope not. And so, and, and that's, that's on me as a leader and as a coach that when I call them, it's not always for correction, right? It's always, it's for encouragement. And so you never want a player to look at, uh, oh, you know, get discouraged when they see you. You want them to kind of draw to you. And so you got to make sure that as a leader, I got to make sure that as a coach, that I'm that coach that they draw to because I'm an encourager, right? I'm an energizer to them in whatever shape or form. Not just, hey, I did something wrong. Coach is going to correct me. But, hey, I see coach and he's a cor- he, he encourages me, right? He gives me gives me courage to get better. He gives he gives me support to be able to, to improve in what I do. So you you. We have to be consciously um, aware of that influence that we have and know that we, you know, they're, they're, they're thinking something on their end. And so we have to make sure that we, we provide a safe environment, a safe connection uh, between the, the both of us that they don't get nervous. How many of these guys, when you were hired, knew who you were? Not just the coach, but the player too. <laughs> I think they knew, you know, I think they knew. I, I, I think they've looked, you know, they probably looked it up on Google and, you know, and, and do their research and all, and, and all that stuff. And, you know, when I came here, uh, you know, I, I told them, I, I came here to coach you, right? I didn't come to coach my past. I didn't come to coach who I was as a player. Um, and I think that's important that you, you do provide, you, you do appreciate your past and your experience that you should have. But, but the most important job you got is the one that's in front of you. And I think once they understood that, they're like, oh, dude, coach is here for me. He's not here because of he did this or he coached there. He's here for me. And so that's part of the connection and trust that you build in the in the room. But do you ever bring out, well, you know, <laughs> when I was in the NFL. <laughs> no, I think I think they're just um, it just gives credibility and you can measure that without having to tell it. So when I tell them something, I mean, their ears are up. And so you listen. And so, you know, you could tell that they have a sense of trust and you, you have a credibility with them. Credibility is not something that you that you tell people. Credibility is something that people give to you. And so when they give me their attention, when they're in class, I mean, when they're in their meetings 10 minutes early, when they're out here 15 minutes early, even when no other group is doing it, right? They're there. As you can tell, like, we're the last ones to run off, right? We just ran like six, six to eight half gashers, right? And like they never flinch because they look at you, they have that sense of trust. And, you know, some of that probably comes from, you know, uh, some of the stuff that I've done as a player and stuff, some of the stuff that I've done as a coach. But I want it to happen because they know that it'll make them better. Right. I know that it makes our room better. I want them to do it because they know, hey, this is part of the deal. This is, this is how we do. This is how we play football. And so, uh, yeah, I'm, 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 I never really taught or anything like that. But I, I, I love and, and appreciate the attention and the detail and, and just their willingness. And uh, again, that could. I guess that can contribute to who you've been, but uh, you know they don't care how much you know until they know how much you care, and I think that's why they do it mostly. Let's talk about your line. I mean, you said you just came off and they, they had to run some extra things. I, I don't know whether that was because of something good they did, something bad, just teaching, whatever. How has it been? You know, what what can you tell us about the defensive tackles right now? Yeah, for for us, it's just getting really good at our job, right? And 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 like really really good like 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 conference contending type good right now that, that takes a lot of building it takes a lot of discipline it takes a lot of reps uh but most importantly just it it, it takes a it takes a certain type of culture and and, and a person in the room and, and we've talked about this all the time is understanding who we are and what our core values are and right and so today one of our core values uh 
the three of our core values is really just being tough, right? Being physical and being really skilled. And so when we talk about tough, tough for us is performing over circumstances, right? Whatever the weather is, we're still going to try to perform at a high level. And so today, you know, it's Friday, right? There's a tendency to kind of drift off a little bit. It's morning. Like most people at work. <laughs> right. It's the morning, right? We're used to practicing in, in the afternoon, right? That's another component in, in the deal. Um, we had a pretty long practice, right? That's another component in the deal. And then we get on the line and run. And so uh, emphasizing your culture by what you practice, what you promote and permit. And so, hey, they got on the line, had a smile on their face, buckled it up, and we ran our half gashers, right? And it wasn't for punishment or for anything, but it it's really for emphasizing and strengthening the culture that you have, the core values that your team has. And so um, as a coach, you try to, you, that's what you want to build. And, and, and then what you practice, what you promote, and what you preach, um, and permit is really what the culture is. And so you want to provide that as a coach. I know we've got about a little less than a month of spring practices yeah. left. Who, who though is, I mean, you could probably talk about every single one of your linemen <laughs> and take yeah. five minutes talking about them, but who are some of the guys that, it, that, that you've kind of been, that, that stood out to you, that who've done a good job in whatever they've done a good job in? Yeah, all of, all of them have done well in their own, um, own way in different phases. Josh um, Singh has been a player that's just been able to, to play the cards that he's been given. You know, he's a, he's a walk-on guy that's come in and just really uh, taken in the coaching that's been taking. Um, and so there's him, there's Nisa, I mean, there's Jackson, there's John Nelson. I mean, it goes all the way from there to, to Mac, right? Everybody everybody has has somewhat of an improvement that they made in whatever phase they have. Remember, every everybody's strengths and weaknesses are different. And so uh, you can't really have a cookie-cutter way. That's why you have to kind of customize your coaching to each of them and make sure that they all develop up. All of them have been doing well, man, and, and super proud and, and uh, super grateful to be able to be their coach. A lot of people are going to be watching the defense this next year just, just because, you know, it's just natural. You've got a new coaching staff. Yeah. You want to see how they do. But I think a lot of people are also going to be watching the defensive line because yeah. they want to see, you know, are they going to be able to provide some some disruption? Do you kind of like that pressure on you? Like, yeah, bring it on. Yeah, I mean, there's no – there's. I mean, I, I could see that perspective, right? But there's no pressure, there's no pressure when that's your nature. If that makes sense. Yeah. You're like, hey, they like, for instance, right? I, I like eating. So if I had people show up to watch me eat or watch me cook, <laughs> no pressure because I'm just being who I am. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that's that's the nature. That's the culture that we have. And so when people come here, it's, it's not we don't rise to the expectation of the people. We rise to the expectations of, what, of, of who we are and what we know we are and what we practice, if that makes sense. And so. Uh, and that makes it natural on game day, right? To say, hey, of course I'm physical. Of course I'm disruptive. That, that's what I've been doing. That's how we sleep. That's how we meet. That's how we practice. That's how we do our half gashers after the game. That, that's just what we do. And so uh, that's all part of the, the the engineering that takes place in spring ball, if that makes sense. Yeah, it totally makes sense. So when are you selling tickets to you cooking or eating? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Uh, I, I'll have to come out. Maybe maybe I'll let Jack DeMooney be the uh, facilitator of letting, uh, you know, of, of advertising that. I got to get a good menu course, man. But well, we'll get it out there sometime, man. <laughs> Last question for you. You had these guys run gashers, but do you ever just like want to get down and show them, this is how I want you to do it. And if you do, do you ever go up against anyone? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's a couple times where I've, I've, I've put my hands on, on them. Um, and, you know, this is what I want. You know, you have to, you kind of have to get out there and do it. It comes, I'm not going to be able to cross that, that, that sideline, right? So you do as much as you can and you guide them and, and you support them and, and try to teach them. And, yeah, of course, you, of course, you're going to try to mimic a little bit what you want from them. Uh, but yet yeah, at the same time, you know, they got to they got to learn it. They got to understand it. Uh, not only they got to know, but they got to feel it. Right. And so, uh, yeah, I, I can go out there and show them all that stuff. And that is part of, you know, coaching is be able to instruct them and teach them that way. But most important thing is that they can do it on their own. But yeah. Thanks again to Sione Pouha. So glad he's on the staff now. When we come back, former Cougar football great Brian Keel tells us his picks for his dream alumni team. Don't go anywhere. This is Cougar Tailgate. Cougar Tailgate. I'm Lauren McLean alongside Cleon Wall. Joining us now is former Cougar and NFL linebacker, but more importantly, the guy who caught the winning pass in last year's alumni game, Brian Keel. Thanks for coming on, Brian. Hey, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. You caught the game-winning Hail Mary from Max Hall in last year's alumni game. Are you still basking 
in that glory? Is that something you still think about? So someone asked me that exact question not even a week ago, and I said I am I am still riding that high uh, a year later. So I, I don't know if I'll ever get off that that uh, roller coaster. It's it was so fun, such a fun night, such a fun ending, and and it's it's great for a defensive guy to to have some offensive magic. How many times have you have you brought that up with like other former Cougars in just the past year, saying, "Hey, your anniversary is coming up." You know, it's funny as I, I, uh, in the yesterday, um, Jack DeMooney, he sent out a message to, to our team for this upcoming game. And, um, I was so, t- they were talking about offenses, John Beck's on there, Austin Colley, and they're talking about, and they were kind of joking, you know, we're going to run this and we're going to run that. And, and I had to fight the urge to insert myself and, and remind them and be like, hey, hey, guys, uh, there's a new <laughs> offensive player. So I, I, I need to get some targets and some rep, some reps before the last play of the game. I, I didn't say it, but I wanted to. Guys, you're putting me on the wrong side of the ball. What are you doing? Uh, so who really deserves the credit? Is it, is it you or Max? Uh, you know, I mean, it was a good team effort. Um it was uh, for Max to get the ball down there. It was quite a heave, and um, and it's just kind of funny. I, I've I've never I've I've been on the other side, obviously on defense when a hail mary has happened, and you know I haven't played offense since I didn't even play it in, in high school. We we could only play one way in high school, so I didn't even play offense in high school. I I haven't played offense since like little league. Um, and so I haven't had a ball thrown to me and, and obviously it's a Hail Mary and, you know, I mean, really Max just chucked the ball down there, but what's funny is I felt like he was throwing it to me and I just went up and got it. And I don't know, it just, it was just kind of crazy the way it all happened. I I think you need to take full responsibility for that touchdown catch. (laughs) I'm just... (laughs) <laughs> a Max would probably argue that, but sure, I'll take it. Okay, sounds good. Now, I, I don't believe you and Max are on the same team this year. Is there, you know, are, are we? Gonna, is there a rift, or can we make up a rift right now? Why you two are not on the same team, or did you just like, you know what? I need my own team, Max. I I can't be associated with you because I caught that ball. Yeah, you know, I don't know how they did the team selection, and you know, to be honest, last year I was. Uh, kind of bugged because I wanted to be on team Royal. I never got to wear Royal when I was at BYU mm-hmm. and I'm jealous of these guys because Royal is just better than Navy. Uh, it just is. <laughs> and it looks a hundred times better. And I'm, I'm jealous. I've always wanted to wear Royal. I wanted to wear Royal last year. So I was kind of mad to be on Navy. And again, I'm on Navy. That being said, we are going to win. I don't know, uh, you know, if Max, who knows, but he, he he likes to win, but I'm going to unfortunately have to disappoint him because Navy's going to win again. <laughs> I think there's a lot of guys on that field that really want to win, even though it's just the alumni game. For you, is there pressure to have a repeat performance? Or are you thinking like, hey, I, I got to lay a little bit lower this year because – Cause you are a little bit older, you know, one year older than you were last year. What do you, what do you think of going into this game? I, I am one year older, but I am, am in better shape than I was. Hey. That was a great shape a year ago, but uh, I have really taken my workout regimen c- completely unrelated to this game. Just, you know, for something to do in my life, I, my <laughs> diet is the best it's ever been. And, and my workout is really, it's, at a new level. So, um, is there wow. pressure? You know, there's always pressure. I, I, uh, to, 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 to do something like that is going to be pretty tough, but Ty Detmer is on the other team. And if I can pick six, <laughs> him, then in my book, that'll match it. So that's what I'm going for. <laughs> okay. So how much stretching do you have to do for something like this? Because even though you're working out, you're not doing specifically what you do, in the game when you go work out. I, at least I assume that. I mean, me, I have to stretch out just to walk or go for a little hike. Uh, how much stretching are you going to be doing before this game? And is there any, like in the back of your mind, are you thinking, uh, I can't pull a hamstring or anything like that? Yeah, it it's a real, that's a real threat. Uh, it is different and you can't simulate. It's really hard to train and simulate the movements, the explosive movements that you do in football. I play a lot of basketball but that it's different because basketball is is short bursts um, where, you know, 
football, you've really opened it up and you know, you have those longer strides. It's different. Last year, I knew I would be sore. I couldn't, I was shocked at how sore I was still for <laughs> a week later. Um, and I'm sure I'll be sore again uh, this year, but I can't wait. I love, I love that feeling. I lo- I'm actually looking forward to it. <laughs> it's seriously, it's so much fun. What I love is there's, there's some old guys, there's some young guys, and then there's some guys like you that are right in the middle. How much of an advantage do you think it is for the guys who are pretty fresh out of college? Well, you know, I look at, I look at some of the names um, on the rosters and, and it was, it was the same last year. Um, They, the, the, the Royal team had probably the fastest guy in the game. um, Hifo on their team. And I I Mm -hmm. believe he's on that team again. And, um, he was, he's, I mean, he's a fast player and he's just freshly removed from playing. And uh, he was playing definitely at a different speed than, than most of the guys <laughs> out there in the game last year. Uh, even my dad watching the game on, on, on uh, this, this broadcast, he noticed that as uh, it's kind of funny, but, um, but yeah, it, it, there is a mix of age and I do think, I think they have a couple of those young guys like like Hifo and and Neil uh, that are younger and and still f- closer to their prime. Uh, I think the edge still goes to the the Navy team because the Navy team is pretty pretty loaded uh, with some all time great players. Uh, I ultimately I hope it's a good game. It was great last year. It, it's more fun if it's close. Why do you think this alumni game is such a big hit? Because I've heard from the former players that they loved it. I've heard from fans that they loved it. Why do you think it was such a big hit, and why do you think it could be a big hit this next season? Yeah, I think it's going to be even more uh, than last year in terms of people coming and people watching, um, just because it went so well last year. Um, I think well, there's a couple – to answer your question, I mean, there's a couple of things. Football is – it's just popular. Fo- people love mm-hmm. football. The NFL is the most popular sport here. It, NFL dominates. Um, and it's – and so, you know, football is not going on right now. There's – I guess – I mean, there's there's those other startup leagues that just happen. Um, but, it, you know, they're – and they're okay. But but they're, they're, what I'm getting at is there's there's a void. Like, people want football. So, so that's one reason, you know, and this time of year – and then, so people love football. And then um, you put like some of those names, and and so obviously last year there were big names. But I mean now when you when you add a name like Ty Detmer, who I already mentioned, he's I mean he's pr- basically the the greatest Cougar ever um, with with a Heisman <laughs> on his resume. And then and then just up and down the rosters are all time greats. And so when you have that, it just creates excitement for the fans. And so, I mean, it's that that's why the fans are are interested to see who still got it. And and it and it so it's kind of like the entertainment factor, but also it's nostalgia. It's it's remembering the heyday of some of these players. And you know, I look at I look at um like a a, a James Die, who I don't know if he's playing, but his name's on the on the list. I mean, I mm-hmm. I idolized him when I was a kid, and for <laughs> me to be out there with him. Like that, that excites me. I like I I'm pumped for that. You know, just just in this example. And then in terms of like why the former players are excited, it's because we're all washed up. You know, we had our glory days <laughs> and we miss it. We miss it, yeah. man. It's just there in life. There's I mean, you have kids and you have you. you there's different things with them and your family and it. And it but it, there's nothing like team sports and just the camaraderie and the brotherhood and you know, that life comes in phases and, and that phase is gone for us. We're like I said, we're old has been washed up. But for us to get a little taste of of that brotherhood and that camaraderie and that the competition and the gridiron, it, it, it is just a little taste. It's not the whole thing, but that's why we're so excited because we miss it. We, we, we did it for so long and, and now it's gone. Oh, I can't even imagine. And I'm with you when I look at the list of the teams and see all the names on there. It's just like, why would you not want to watch those? Those were all of our heroes growing up from like every different era. So Brian clean and I made some picks of who we want on our own personal alumni roster. We're going to pick a, we pick a quarterback, a running back, uh, a wide receiver, tight end, and then a couple defensive players. And we want to know your picks. Let's, let's start with quarterback. Who would be your number one quarterback out of all those guys that are playing in the alumni game? 
out of the ones who are playing or just uh, yeah. out of all time BYU? The ones that are playing. Ooh. Um, that's a toss up. So you, I mean, it's, it's you got, Max. Yeah, because you got Ty Max Dimmer, Max Hall, John Beck. Yes. Um, uh huh. What's that? Yeah, I would say we have Brandon cool. Doman, Ty Detmer, John Beck, Beck, and Max Hall. So, I mean, Ty Detmer is the GOAT, but he's old, and I don't know what he's got left in his <laughs> arm. So, <laughs> um, so it's hard to say. I mean, if it was, uh, if we're talking like right now, or are we talking like when they were young? I don't, Cleon, what do you think? I, I think. <laughs> I think right now. Let's go with right yeah, now. Yeah, let's go with right now. Yeah. How, well, the shape they're in right in this moment. I'm going to – so, Matt, I mean, honestly, it's Max and John. Are They have the edge, and John's on my team, so I'll say John. <laughs> Ooh, very <laughs> diplomatic. Uh, okay, Brian, what about uh, what about running back? Um, the, 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 all, the best all-around running back that BYU has ever had is Harvey Unga, and mm. – this is the best all around passing, catching, blocking. Um, that's Harvey. And he's in the game. I think he's on my team. Um, so Harvey. Okay. I like that pick. I had Curtis Brown. Cause have you seen that guy? Like he's behind Jamal Williams, right. In in BYU history, but he's still in phenomenal shape. He's fantastic. All right. Who would be your pick for wide receiver tight end? Uh, wide receiver. Um, because we're going right now, <laughs> I'm going to go with – and who's playing in the game? It is not on my team, but uh, Hefo, because he's the closest to his prime. Mm. <laughs> and I, I don't know that Austin Collie or, or Cody Hoffman, who I think both are on my team, if they hear this, sorry, fellas. <laughs> you guys you guys are much better receivers than he was. than th- You were, but he's closer – he's faster right now. So sorry, guys. <laughs> All right, last one. Uh, pick a couple of defenders. I mean, if you, we'll just assume that you've already picked yourself, but if you had to pick a couple of other <laughs> defenders that you want to play with, uh, who would those guys be? Oh, I'm trying to remember who's even on the list. Uh, um, well, I'll, well, an easy pick just because he's a wild man and is just fun to be along with. I was talking to Kelly Papinga the other day about <laughs> Brady Papinga. And Kelly said, Brady, he's never seen him so excited. And so uh, Brady is one of those guys that relishes everything football. And I'm sure he's been starved without football in his life. And it'll be interesting to see how he does next week. So there, there, that's an easy pick. Um, oh, man. Oh, uh, Gennaro Guilford, uh, you know, he's just, a, I played with him one year, phenomenal player, uh, relative to his age, still got it, you know, smart coach. So that's, there's another easy pick. Didn't Tom Homo have to have a chat with you guys before the game started last year? Like, Hey, you guys got to remember this is for fun. Cause like everyone, even though, you know, it's just like church ball, you know, this is for fun, but everyone gets competitive anyway. And all of you were Division One and some NFL athletes. Is the competitiveness still there when you guys step on the field? You know, honestly, it is, but it's different. There's certain, and you could tell <clears throat> there were certain guys last year who who were playing at a different gear than the other guys, and a lot of it has to do with the shape that they're in. But because there were some guys who were genuinely just out there having fun. But there were a lot of us, because I was in this group, that were out there to win. <laughs> and if I lace them up, I'm going to win. That's just how I am. That's how I'm wired. And and there's there's a mix. Some guys are like that, and some guys are, are genuinely just having a good time. Oh, I love it. I can't wait. We're here with former Cougar and NFL linebacker Brian Kale. Brian, thanks so much for coming on. And, we, hey, we're rooting for you. We're rooting for you to have uh, a repeat of last year. One more catch. Pick six, pick six, Ty Detmer. That's that's what there I need. There you go. So. You're calling it. I love it. All right, Brian, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. Appreciate it, guys. And that does it for us today. Thanks again to Sione Pouha and Brian Keel for coming on the show with us. You can join the Cougar Tailgate wherever you get your podcasts on Apple, TuneIn, Stitcher, Spotify, or on BYUradio.org. Cougar Tailgate is a production of BYU Radio.